Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and today we're going to be making a dark mode switcher for your Oxygen website using a JavaScript framework called Alpine.js. Now, Alpine.js gives you a lot of things that other JavaScript frameworks offer, but it's much more minimal. Uh, for instance, the full bundle size when gzipped is only about 7.1 kilobytes, which is very, very small and much smaller than jQuery at around 32 kilobytes gzipped. So a lot of folks mention that Alpine can kind of be a lighter weight replacement for jQuery. Now, if you're using WordPress, then jQuery is going to be loaded by default. You can just keep using jQuery, but if you're trying to remove jQuery from the equation, then Alpine can be a really cool and powerful option that gives you a lot of capability similar to something like Vue. So our goal here today is to build a simple toggle that switches between light and dark modes for a page or post on our site. So I'm here on a dummy post that I've created that has a bunch of content in Gutenberg. So we're just going to build this out very, very quickly and very simply. So let's add a heading here and we're going to insert the title. And then we're going to add another section and we're going to give this a class of content wrapper, which I've already set up and has this nice like gray background here. Then we're going to add a text element and we're going to give this a class of content, which I've also set up some styles for this one here, which gives it a max width of around 768 pixels, a background color of white and some padding. But for the text uh, itself, we're going to insert the content from Gutenberg. And then on this section, we want to make sure everything is centered. And then we'll go ahead and just center the heading as well. So let's jump up to the front end and take a look at what we have and what we're going to be working with. So we have a, a title and then we have all of our content down here. So this is what we want to be able to switch between light and dark modes, which it's just a matter of adding some CSS or removing some CSS, really. So how do we do that? We could do it a bunch of different ways. You could use jQuery. You could use vanilla JavaScript. You could even use oxygen conditions and like a URL parameter. But I think all of that is probably needlessly complex compared to the approach we're going to take today using Alpine. So let's add a code block and get started on this. We want to make sure the code block is in the root here, so directly under the body, not nested in anything else, because we're going to set this code block under advanced layout to position fixed. And we're going to put it 32 pixels from the right and 32 pixels from the bottom. And then we're going to set the Z index to some insanely high number, like 9,999, because we want this to lay on top of everything else. Now we can jump into the code. We're not going to use the CSS editor or the JavaScript editor. Um, everything with Alpine for the most part happens within your uh, PHP and HTML. So the first thing we need to do is we need to include Alpine. Now we've done a video before on using Vue and including it via CDN link, which is okay for prototyping, but they don't really recommend it for production. Alpine's different. They actually recommend including Alpine with a CDN link, which is super cool for, for oxygen projects where we just want to load it up in a code block and use a little bit of functionality. So we're going to do a script tag. The source is going to be slash slash unpkg.com slash alpine.js. Now this is just going to grab the most recent version of Alpine. If you're building something and you're concerned about stability, you might want to pass in a version there. Um, we're going to put a defer and then close our script tag. So Alpine's now ready to be used in this project, which if you looked into other frameworks and some of the build tools required to really use them in a project, uh, this is actually quite refreshing to be able to just drop in this CDN link and get started. Now we're gonna build out our structure in HTML here. We're gonna create a div with a class of mode-switcher. And then we're gonna add another div with a class of dark mode dash switcher. And then within that div, we are going to add another div called, and actually I see a typo there already. Fix that. And we're gonna add another div and we're gonna give it a class of dark mode dash switcher underscore underscore circle. 
So we're just going to build a basic toggle situation. You've seen toggles other places. We're just going to build one of those. And then we can close that div. Now, this is all just raw HTML at this point. But now it's time to start adding in some Alpine stuff. So with Alpine, we're going to establish an attribute called x-data on our root element. So this is essentially our app wrapper, if you're familiar with the way other frameworks work. So this is giving us our data, uh, which can include all kinds of stuff like variables. So we open and close curly braces and put everything between that. So we're gonna add a property here called dark mode and that's gonna be false by default. And then we're gonna do a comma and add another property called switch mode, which is actually gonna be a function. And when that function runs, what we wanna do is we want dark mode to be whatever it currently is not. So we're gonna say dark mode equals not dark mode. And actually when you're accessing these properties within the data of an Alpine app, like within this switch mode function, we actually need to do this dot dark mode. This dot dark mode, which is not necessary when you're using the properties within your HTML. And I'll show you that here in a minute. So basically we have our dark mode, which is false by default. And then we have a switch mode function, which just sets the dark mode to true if it's false or false if it's true. Now what we wanna do is we want to have our dark mode switcher actually fire that switch mode function when we click it. Now with Alpine, it's easy to do. We do an at symbol, click, and then tell it which function we want it to run. We want it to run switch mode. So now when we click our dark mode switcher div, it will run that function, which will toggle the dark mode on and off. And one way we can kind of illustrate this is we can use the Alpine attribute X dash text. And within that we can output the value of dark mode. Okay, so let's save that. And actually I see an error here. We need to go back and fix this. We don't need the dot JS here in the uh, CDN link. It's just Alpine JS. And I'll make sure to include the correct code for you in the video description so you can copy and paste this project into your Oxygen site. So let's save that now that we fixed that problem and jump up here and just refresh. And now we're gonna see down at the bottom right where we told our little switcher to live that it says false, which is the value of dark mode, but if we click it, we should be toggling it between false and true and true and false. See, we click, true, click, false, click, true, click, false. So that's our behavior. And we didn't really write any JavaScript, which is kind of the cool thing about Alpine is you're not really writing all the functionality yourself. You're using these handy little attributes to make things happen, which is super cool. Now we're gonna use a thing called x dash if so we need to add a template tag and then on that we put x dash if dark mode so if dark mode is true whatever's in this template tag will be output if it's not true none of it will even be in the markup so what do we want to do when dark mode is true well we're going to change the way some things look what's the best way to do that css so we're going to add a style tag and this style tag is gonna be where we output all our dark mode CSS. But first, we do need to make our little toggle actually look like a toggle. So let's remove this X dash text. And in the terms of JavaScript frameworks and Alpine in particular, this X dash text attribute is actually called a directive. So if you're Googling things about these, you'll wanna use the term directive instead of attribute. So let's add a style tag up here and go ahead and style up our toggle. Close that. So we got a few things we wanna do here. So first, the dark mode dash switcher needs to have some styles. We're gonna set it to a width of 64 pixels, a height of 32 pixels, border radius of 80 pixels, display flex, flex direction, row, align items, center justify content flex start that'll put our little circle at the left uh, to begin with then we need a little bit of padding two pixels we want our cursor to indicate that this thing's clickable when we hover over it so we're going to say cursor pointer and then we'll set the background color to a not quite black 
like one nine one nine one nine and then we want to transition on this so transition 0.3 seconds all ease in out now for our actual circle we're going to add some styles as well. Dark mode dash switcher underscore underscore circle. We're going to set the width to 28 pixels, the height to 28 pixels, the border radius to the same as we used on the dark mode switcher, which is 80 pixels. The background color, we want it to be white. And then we're going to set the transition here as well to 0.3 seconds, all ease in out. So that sets up our basic style. So we'll go up to the front end and take a look at what that looks like. So that gives us this little switcher. It looks like we can click it though. When we click it, nothing happens. And that's the next thing we need to do. So when we switch to dark mode, we need to do a couple of things. The first thing I want to do is I want to change the dark mode switcher background, background color to white. And then I want to change the dark mode switcher circle background color to that same 191919. So we're just um, inverting it basically. And then we want to move our switcher circle to the right. Now we don't want to use margin or padding to animate anything because that's not good to do. Uh, we're going to use transform. So transform, translate X, and we're going to move it to the right. 32 pixels, which is half the width of our total switcher element. Now, again, this is within this template with this X if dark mode. So this style is only going to be output if dark mode equals true. So at this point, we should be able to go down here and click this and see the behavior, which is beautiful, right? So now we do the whole thing this video is about and we we actually set up our dark mode. So we have two classes, we have content wrapper and we have content itself. And what we want to do is we want to set the content wrapper background color to black. And then the content, we want to set its color to white so the text is all white and we want the background color to be that 191919 that we used before. And one final thing we can do is we can set our body to background color black. And if our 52 lines of HTML and CSS and a little bit of JavaScript uh, in these directives works as expected, we should now have dark mode switcher. So let's pop up here and we're going to refresh and let's switch to dark mode. And like that, we now have dark mode and we can switch back, back and forth, back and forth. So this is just a really simple and kind of elegant piece of functionality you can add using Alpine if you don't want to do it with jQuery or vanilla JavaScript or whatever else uh, approach you can use. And the awesome part is because Alpine is reactive, everything just kind of works and is smooth and fluid and changes like you'd expect it to. You don't have to listen and watch for a bunch of stuff like you might have to do if you were building this with vanilla JavaScript. So using this as a starting project, I'm sure you can imagine a ton of other things you could do with Alpine. So I'd encourage you to experiment on your Oxygen websites or any other website or even a standalone app and just see what you can build because learning tools like this uh, give you basically a superpower when it comes to building websites because there's really nothing a client can ask you to do that you have to say, I don't know how. If you know how to write a little bit of JavaScript or work with a framework like Alpine, you have another tool in your toolbox that's gonna make you able to accommodate basically any need a client could require of you when building a site. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to build a dark mode switcher in Oxygen using Alpine.js. Thank you very much for watching.